Hey guys, and welcome to a tutorial series for the Animal Behavior Kit. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Animal Spawners. We're going to be looking at the Animal Spawner Settings and the Animal Spawner Triggers, which is a separate blueprint that helps you with the original Animal Spawner. So, let's go ahead and jump to Unreal. And if you've been following uh, the tutorial sequentially, you know that the last tutorial was all about population control. And that is one way for you to spawn new animals in your level, right? Basically, having the population uh, controller uh, spawn animals when the population goes below a certain minimum, right? Um, but there is another way to spawn animals in your level. And that has nothing to do with the population control. That is its own separate animal spawner. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So before we get started, let's go ahead and delete all this population stuff because we're not going to use this anymore. So click on BP population control and delete it. And the population animal spawner is going to get deleted as well. So go ahead and save. <clears throat> and if you go to the top level animal behavior kit, click on blueprints, AI, spawners, and here you'll have bp animal spawner and right now again uh, we're going to use this little um, platform here as a visual aid we're going to grab bp animal spawner and we're going to put this guy right here um, otherwise when we're playing when we when we uh, hit play we won't know exactly where this guy is uh, and yeah we're not going to worry too much about having it perfectly fine there so what is the animal spawner? It's as, as the name implies, it's another way for you to spawn your animals in your level, either on begin play or when the player hits the trigger. Uh, and that allows you to um, spawn animals during uh, run time, at, at play time, and allows you to um, maybe not have as many animals at the beginning of the game. In other words, if you have a massive level and your game is fairly linear, um, having all your animals towards the back of the level, uh, even though they're inactive, right, because so you're using the proximity settings, it still takes space in the memory. They're still ticking. They're still checking for player proximity every, let's say, 10 seconds or whatever. So even though they are very, very cheap as far as uh, performance, there is still a performance hit, right? So you may want to use an animal spawner to spawn animals towards the end of your level, right? So as the player is getting closer uh, to that area, you may want to use the trigger to actually spawn animals when the player gets close, right? So that's kind of the purpose of it. Um, so it's, it's a fairly simple blueprint. If we click on it and we look on the, at, the, at the setup, Again, like every other system here, you have the ability to activate it or deactivate it. And then we have a spawn method. And if you click here, you have three different methods. Begin play, meaning it's gonna spawn the animals as soon as you start playing. Overlap trigger, meaning when the player overlaps this trigger. Or inactive, right? Inactive here is different than this active uh, boolean here this active boolean here means that this is just not going to work period inactive here basically means that this blueprint is dormant and this works in conjunction with the spawn trigger blueprint which we will look at in just a second so just to clarify these two things are different this active is whether this blueprint works at all and the spawn method inactive basically says that this blueprint will be activated by a separate trigger somewhere else. So let's just keep things simple for now. Let's go ahead and keep it at begin play. There's a ground animal list, and this is again an array. So let's just click on the plus sign here, and we need to specify the animal class. So why don't we go ahead and spawn uh, this guy here, right? And it's going to be um, bp underscore buck underscore tutorial. 
we're going to be spawning bucks here. Uh, and then you have a number to spawn. We're going to spawn one buck on begin play. And you can specify the roam behavior and the engage behavior of the spawned animal. And uh, you can also specify uh, details for the location. For example, if you want the the the, uh, the animal to go to a specific uh, uh, volume, you can uh, you can specify path information if you want the animal to follow a path, or point of interest information if again you want your animal to go to a POI. There's also a spawn delay in seconds here. In this case, the default is two seconds. So right now, all we're going to do is spawn this animal on begin play and the animal is going to go to a random location in mesh and the animal will ignore the player so let's go ahead and click play and you can oops uh you see those errors is because these two guys have the um, population control component active so let's go before we do that uh, let's uh, click on uh, the buck go to the class bp buck tutorial and you see the component population control let's go ahead and um, deactivate it see it says setup active click on uh, deactivate it there we're going to do the same thing for the doe uh, population control we're going to simply deactivate it there otherwise it throws that error because it's trying to look for a population control blueprint and it doesn't find one so right now as soon as I hit play, you'll just spawn a buck here. There you go. A buck has been spawned and it's just going to go roam around randomly, right? Not terribly exciting, right? Uh, but we can we can play around with this, right? We can say, hey, I actually want to spawn more than one. So how about we spawn four? And we're going to spawn four total uh, animals of this class. And we're going to spawn one animal every Two seconds that's where the spawn delay comes in so I hit play we spawn one buck two seconds later we spawn another buck two seconds later another one and another one until we reach the maximum so again uh, with one spawner you can go ahead and spawn multiple animals right so you don't have to have one spawn per animal for example right um, let's go ahead and change the mode instead of begin play I want to use overlap trigger and the trigger here you can see right here under the components you can actually select the trigger and you can change the um, the oh, actually you don't have to do that uh, you can come down here to the trigger scale and change the values here let's make this 20 by 20 Actually, that's too big. Let's make it 10 by 10. Uh, 12 by 12 or 15 by 15. <laughs> All right, that, that, that looks a lot better. There you go. And we're going to move it here kind of towards the middle. There you go. All right. So now this is only going to spawn once we hit the trigger. Click on play. Nothing happens as soon as we hit the trigger. You can see that now we start spawning every two seconds. Another option is random spawn. So what happens if you add more than one animal here? So let's go ahead and add another ground animal. Click on the plus sign. And in this case, we want to spawn a doe. BP doe tutorial. And we want to spawn two of these guys. Um, so it's four of the bucks and two of the those and right now if I were to hit play and overlap the trigger it'll go sequentially it'll first spawn the four bucks and once that's done it'll go and spawn the those every two seconds it'll do it sequentially so as you can see here it's going by index of the array is grabbing this first one here, spawning four of these. When it's done, it passes to the next one. It spawns two of these. And then you can add as many animals as you want. However, if you click on random spawn, 
it won't actually follow this order. So now if we click play, well, and that's obviously, there you go. You can see that the those were uh, spawned first and then the box. Random is random, right? Um, so if you have a bunch of different animals here, different types of animals, and you click on random spawn, it'll pick a random uh, index in the array and it'll spawn that, and then it'll pick another random index and another random index, etc. Okay. Besides that, why don't we look at the next spawn method, which is inactive. Inactive means that if I click play, even if I overlap the trigger, nothing happens, right? So what's going to happen now is that we're going to look at another blueprint called BP animal spawner trigger. And this is a separate class, a separate trigger. Uh, that uh, basically uh, takes on a spawner list. So right now, uh, all we have is the trigger scale, which is five by five. Let's make this like I don't know, 20 by 20, for example. And then you can show or hide the trigger. And then it'll just take a list of spawners. So if you can click on the plus sign here and you click on the drop down, there's only one animal spawner in the level, so you can just click on the animal spawner. And if we hit play, and we go forward, notice that now, as soon as we hit the, the overlap, the trigger activated that animal spawner over there, and the animal spawner goes through uh, spawning all of the animals just as the settings implied, right? So this is basically the equivalent of overlapping the local trigger, except that you can put this anywhere else. However, notice something interesting. This takes a list of spawners, right? So to make things interesting, uh, if we go to this animal spawner, let's move the animal spawner um, here, for example, and, uh, and the spawner trigger, we're gonna move to the platform. And that's just to make things a little bit easier to, uh, to kind of find, right? So we have this spawner here, and we're going to duplicate this guy, and we're going to have a spawner here. We're going to duplicate this guy, and we're going to have a spawner here. So we have three different spawners. And now, when we go to the spawn trigger, whoops, try to, try to click, let's see, spawn trigger. Now we can actually add the other spawners to the list. Spawner 2, Spawner 3. And now, as I'm sure you might expect, as soon as we hit this trigger, all three spawners are activated at the same time. So, a very easy way to quickly add animals to a level by having separate spawners. You can also use this, for example, to create uh, waves or, of enemies, right? Uh, if you make the, the, the spawn delay something large, like 30 seconds, 60 seconds, right? You can put whatever you want. It's just a, it's just a timer, right? You could create waves of enemies with several different spawners, or you could, um, you know, um, have a lot of different spawners and create like, a, like an encounter. Uh, where a, a bunch of these um, animals just spawn, right? So you can get really creative here. Um, another thing is um, that you can see on the trigger is the option of spawn once, right? So what does that mean? It means that when you overlap this trigger, it'll only fire once, and that's the default behavior. Usually that's what you want, right? If, if I overlap the trigger, one time, it'll spawn the animals. If I leave the trigger and come back, nothing happens, right? You just want this to happen once. However, maybe you don't want that, right? It may be a use case that you want an animals to spawn every time the player goes to a specific location, right? And in that case, you disable this, click play, and as soon as we hit the trigger, 
we spawn animals in the three different triggers that we have, in the three different spawners that we have. Here you see the animals are spawning, right? Now the does. And then I leave and I come back and the animals spawn again. All right, so those are the options. It's uh, fairly simple, but this is just one more way of the spawner, of, of you um, having the ability to add animals to your uh, level. A future update uh, uh, possibility that I have is a way of killing the animals that have been spawned, right? Uh, so that's in my list of potential uh, future updates. Um, so maybe when the player goes into an area, you spawn the animals, and then when the player leaves the area, you despawn the animals, effectively saving in performance, right? And right now, there is no way of doing that. You can only spawn the animals and then they'll go around about in the world, right? You could use the population control to do that. But if you wanted to avoid that um, and you wanted to be very specific and use triggers, that's a possibility for the future. However, that's not available yet. It's not going to be available for release, but it's definitely a good candidate for a future update. All right, guys. Uh, that's all there is to it. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next video.